Well, hi there. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to 2020, even though we're not there yet when I'm recording this video. Uh, let's talk about payroll. There have been changes this year to the W-4 form, which is what everybody has to fill out when they start a new, start a new job in 2020, or you want to fill one out and update your W-4, you can. With the 2020 version, there's a different W-4, and it affects payroll withholding. And I've spent the last two days conforming the payroll application that I have built in Microsoft Excel to work with this. And I'm going to show you how I did it. And also, if you're interested in running payroll for your small business, this is like the easiest and cheapest way on the internet to do it, is using this file. I'm going to go over some functionality of it and also talk about what's new in the W-4, how it affected payroll withholding, and how you can write a very annoying and long formula to get it right, because that's what you have to do now. So first of all, the W-4, what has happened? It can be easy or it can be hard. And they, at least they have allowed us, the IRS, to kind of blow through this form pretty quickly. You don't even have to fill a new one out if you're you know, staying employed at the same place over the year and you're not going somewhere new. You don't have to fill out a new one for 2020, but you're eventually going to have to. So let's talk about what you need to do and how it can be easy and also kind of why it's doing what it's doing. So the good thing about this is you can kind of blow through this really fast and just pick a filing status. Um, and that could be all you need to do is just put your filing status in assign step five and you're good to go however if you want to get more complicated with it and you know figure out why you either have a, a big refund or you owe a lot at the end of the year some different things can happen if you don't estimate your annual income appropriately they give you options through these multiple steps to do different things to your income to get your employer to withhold an amount that is more reasonable and matches more to what you owe at the end of the year and so the questions they're going to ask, um, there's also another way that you can kind of blow through this form pretty quickly and still go to step two, because it says fill out step two through four uh, only if you need to, or, you know, you can go look at an app online, which is pretty complicated. I went through the process there. It takes a while. It's for super complicated withholding scenarios and multiple jobs and things like that. Or you can just say a common one that they accounted for here is, hey, if you only work you maybe work two jobs, right? So you fill out a W-4 for both jobs. And you kind of know something's supposed to happen. If you just click this box and you work your two jobs and then do the same thing on your other W-4 for your other job and just check the box, you don't have to do anything else here and it's probably going to withhold uh, the right amount. It's going to put you into the proper tax bracket and do that. But there are other things it's going to ask for. And what I've done is I've built a W-4 simulator here that shows you what the questions are that are relevant and then the pieces of information that you need as a payroll provider because you may potentially need these six pieces of information from that W-4 to add them to your employee information roster sheet so that you can withhold appropriately. Well, the uh, W-4 here, it's going to ask for your, your filing status. It's going to say, did you or did you not check that box? Like, do you have two jobs and do you want to check that box? Yes or no, right? It wants to know your qualifying children and dependents and stuff that's going to um, create a, a dependent amount here. It wants to know if you have income from another job that doesn't get taxed or something. You can put that there in step four. Any extra withholding you would want would go here. Uh, if you have two jobs, you get to use this worksheet. They have a bunch of these tables they created. If you have multiple jobs where you look on the table for your filing status, you know, if you're married filing jointly and you're working two jobs, and one of them's $80,000 and the other one's $10,000. You go where the two meet here. The higher one, higher paying job on the left, the lower paying job up top. And then you find where they meet and you put that number right here, whatever that is. So if we said 80 and 10 right there, 32, 60 or something, if you're married filing jointly, which we're not, I think we're whatever it is, right? So you put that number there. If you have three jobs, you can do it again and it's even more annoying. Um, it also wants to know the number of pay periods that you get paid here on your on your highest paying job. It's 26 in the version we're doing right now because we're doing a bi-weekly version for Ohio. That's what we're working on. And um, any itemized deductions you have, uh, if you know, you know, home interest, mortgage, just stuff like that, uh, that can come out. You can put that here and it'll figure out any more deductions that you could potentially get. And it's going to bring them up into a number. And those are the numbers that you're going to need if you're a payroll provider. Let's talk about that. So because you can not fill out a W-4 and have one that's old and still 
get your payroll withheld at a certain rate. Uh, you don't have to fill one out. You have to be able to account for handling this both ways as a payroll provider or as a business. So what I have is the, the information you need to fill out. How many W-4 deductions or allowances did they have in, in the previous years, W-4, the old one, if they're still using the old one? And then here I have this question, did the employee fill out a W-4 for 2020? Yes or no? It matters because if they fill one out, we're going to go through a different way of calculating their withholding as if they didn't fill one out. So you have to answer this question. Are they married? How many state exemptions? Local tax because this is Ohio. What state are they in Ohio? Now, you see how this is black over here? Well, when you say no, this person did not fill out a W-4, it turns to black over there. So it makes you know that you don't have to fill that area out. But if it's a yes, it's going to be purple. And it's going to want to know what was their filing status? What was that amount from step four? What's step four? Step 4A? Step 4A was this, other income from other jobs. What was the amount from step 4B? What was 4B? 4B was the amount of deductions figured out in that schedule below if they fill that out. Is that box check that we were talking about, that's the box about whether or not they had two jobs or not. That's this thing right here. Did they check that box or not? Well, you got to answer that question in here. We got to know that answer. Yes or no? Amount from step three. What was step three? Step three was the total number of dependents and children amount here. It's just $7,000 in this instance. So let's put $7,000 there. $77,000. Uh, amount from 4C, which is any extra withholding. So these are the things you're going to need. And the reason you're going to need them is because after you start entering in daily hours and things like that, I've got a couple employees, you can enter hours in here, commission amounts or whatever, and you can enter hours into this bi-weekly record sheet that gives you all the information um, right here. You just kind of enter in their hourly rate and any bonus or anything, and it's going to go down and it's going to figure out everything you need for payroll and do all your reporting. What I'm going to talk about in this video, instead of going through how all that works, there will be more videos about how that works later in the year as we do more files. But um, I want to talk about how the federal withholding was calculated because it's complicated now this year. So what they did is they set up these like six different tables depending on what your filing status is and whether or not you filled out a W-4 for 2020 and whether or not you checked that box on the 4 for W-20. There's all these different conditions to figure out which table you need to use. So what I did to ease this was uh, I figured out first you have to annualize your wages. So you get your taxable gross and then you multiply it by the number of pay periods in your year. There's 26 pay periods in this file because it's a bi-weekly file so it's 26 pay periods and they're t twice a month essentially every two weeks you get, you get a paycheck and it wants to know the annualized wages. So you get this number that looks at what you're going to be making for the year. You then have to adjust it depending on whether or not the person filled out or checked the box on that W-4. This formula does it all for you, but that's what it's doing is it's figuring out what the adjusted annual wage is that's going to be subject to the tax. And once you get that, you have to use these, uh, this table and these, these progressive rate structure formulas. I programmed every single scenario into here. Every single scenario being, well, what if the person, scenario involves their filing status, whether or not they filled out a W-4 for 2020, and whether or not they checked the box. Those are the three different things you need to know at this point. So there's a formula here. It's a progressive rate structure. It's a nested if formula. What it does is it looks and says if the income amount is more than this but less than this, do this to it. If it's more than this but less than this, do this to it. That's what all these little ifs are here. I'll paste this in the description in the comments. You can just copy it, change the cell reference, and apply it in Excel into your own file if you want uh, so that you don't have to do it yourself. Also, let me know if I made any typos because I blew through a ton of these in the last two days. So that would be helpful. Um, so it checks to say, well, if this person was married filing separately and they didn't check the box on their W-4 for 2020, this is what their withholding is going to be. And it goes through all the different scenarios for all the different filing statuses and whether or not they check the box or not, whether or not they filled the W-4 or not. Well, after you have that, you have to figure out, well, which one actually applied to this situation? And that's this formula I made, which is a the one that's looking to say, how much federal tax are we actually withholding for this pay period? What that does is it goes through all these ifs, and it says if the person did what, like this is 142.55 is, is what the withholding is. It's this right here, which
which is single married filing separate single or married filing separately and the box is checked well is that what we have in our in our information is this person single married filing separately the answer is yes is the box checked yes so it's working there what if we change that and say the box is not checked they didn't they didn't have two jobs they didn't want to do it that way box is not checked you go back and you see that the withholding is now 8558 because the box is not checked which is this one so that's our filing status but this is what the withholding is so it's looking by finding whether or not the box was checked or not whether or not they filled out the w4 for 2020 or not and putting in the right amount right there so that you don't have to because that's how complicated it is now folks now all of a sudden you need to do these like nine things to figure out what to tax when they fill out a new w4 or not or even if they have an old one so it is not fun and, and payroll providers are not going to enjoy having to deal with this because this just came out pretty recently so that's how all that works uh, this payroll file has a million different things it can do uh, it does reporting, so whenever you want to look at like your quarterly 941 report, you can just choose the quarter, and it would tell you what it is. I think Dave Chappelle made a ton of money this quarter. You can also choose just the month, and it will give you information for that month. There was nothing in March. How about January? In January, there was a lot. Or you could just do a pay period to show you what your liability is going to be. Um, I have a lot of periods of no activity here. That, that fills in automatically. You can also do the same for the state of Ohio over here. Uh, this is the state report for Ohio. does the same thing, fills everything out. We have pay stubs. You choose the name on the pay stub, and it's going to automatically write out a pay stub. You can actually print this on a paycheck if you've got it the right size. It tells you all the different types of hours the person would have, what their gross wages are, what all the withholdings are on the pay stub, so you can print that. We've got W-2s you can fill at the end of the year. You just choose the name and all of the information fills in automatically for their W-2 for the year. You also have other pivots where if you refresh this, you can get information about all your employees and all the different types of tax in a pivot form so that you can make reports that are more dynamic. You can look at things like unemployment over here, which is going to be based on a state unemployment rate, which is buried down here. Depending on whatever state you, you have, there's max wages and there's unemployment that, that is charged. That's at employer expense. It doesn't come out of the employee's wages. It's employers. You also have workers' comp that this thing can handle. The file can really do anything, and I've been doing this for, for over 10 years already. And um, this was a really substantial change this year to do all these different withholding scenarios and add them to the file. But they are done, and they look to be working. So if you're interested in the file, Go to KenBraverman.com or contact me, and I can build one for you because by the end of the end of January, I'd like to have every state for weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly. There's no reason we can't do this. Um, I've, I've handled at least probably 15 to 20 different states in the past. There's some I haven't done, but you know, 2020, it's a year to see well. <laughs> it's a year with, with clarity, 2020, so let's get it all done. Um, but yeah, it's pretty complicated this year and the brand new W-4, so don't get scared of the W-4. A lot of people are just going to choose a filing status and move on, but you still need to do that. And if they're going to fill one out, you need to harness this information. So employers, those uh, those six things right there are, are important for these different steps and the filing status and the additional withholding. And I guess we're out for now, so happy payrolling.